The hidden meaning of dreams, prologue in the unfolding that we all experience when we fall asleep. The soul leaves the physical body and enters the world of dreams when we sleep. This small treatise on dream symbolism is of great importance for esoteric students and for anyone who wishes to know what their dreams are telling them from an occult perspective, just as they have been deciphered since ancient times. The first part deals with dreams in general, and the second part focuses on what numbers, in particular, indicate. There is much more to learn about dreams beyond what is presented in this publication, and the same applies to numbers. However, the guidance provided here is substantial and serves as a fundamental introduction for those beginning their journey into the numerical science called Kabbalah. The world of dreams corresponds to what is esoterically known as the astral world, where both the living and the dead exist. This realm is governed by five dimensions, one more than what governs us humans in the physical world. In this realm, the law of gravity does not exist, as we can jump, levitate, and even fly. It is referred to as the world of the living and the dead because when the physical body dies, the soul moves to the region of dreams, and when the living dream, the soul also leaves the physical body to travel to the world of dreams. Here, the living and the dead can encounter each other. To anyone who doubts this, we ask, why do we often see in our dreams those who have passed away? Esotericism deals with the hidden, the concealed within ourselves. In our own selves, we find the answers to all existing mysteries. As we get to know ourselves better, the ancient saying, Man, know thyself, and you will know the universe and the gods, becomes evident. Anyone genuinely interested in self-discovery should search and investigate, they will find the answers to their desires. Chapter 2 on Dreams Gnosis teaches us that there are many different types of dreams, which the modern psychology of the declining Western Hemisphere radically ignores. Undoubtedly, dreams vary in specific quality due to their intimate connection with each of the psychic centers within the human organism. In all truth, we can assert that the majority of dreams are closely linked to the instinctive motor center, serving as echoes of things experienced during the day, simple sensations and movements, and mere astral repetitions of our daily lives. Some emotional experiences, such as the fear that plagues humanity, find their place in these chaotic dreams of the instinctive motor center. Emotional, sexual, intellectual, motor, instinctive, and other types of dreams exist. The most significant dreams, the intimate experiences of one's being, are associated with the two higher centers, the emotional superior and mental superior centers. Dreams related to these two higher centers are always characterized by what could be described as a dramatic formulation. Now, if we consider the ray of creation and the interplay between the superior and inferior centers, and the influences descending through the cosmic ray, we must admit that we are exposed to luminous vibrations that attempt to heal and inform us about our state. Receiving messages and being in contact with adept Aztecs, Mayans, Toltecs, Egyptians, Greeks, and others is beneficial. It is also marvelous to have intimate conversations with the various higher aspects of our being. These higher centers are fully developed within us and convey messages that we must learn to consciously apprehend. For very select individuals who have had moments of self-remembering in life, during which they saw something or someone ordinary in an entirely new way, it will not be surprising to learn that these moments share the same inner quality or flavor as those rare and strange dreams associated with the emotional and mental superior centers. Undoubtedly, the significance of such transcendent dreams belongs to the same order as the realization of the ray of creation, particularly its eighth lateral aspect. When one begins to grasp the wave of significance of these specific dreams, it is a sign that certain forces are striving to awaken, heal, and cure us. Each one of us is a mathematical point in space that serves as a vehicle for a certain sum of good or bad values. Death is the subtraction of fractions, once the mathematical operation is complete, all that remains are the white or black values. In accordance with the law of eternal return, values are undoubtedly brought back and reintegrated. When a person becomes more conscious of the small cycle of recurrent events in their personal life, they can verify for themselves through direct mystical experience, that the same mathematical operation of death is repeated in daily dreams. 
In the absence of the physical body during normal sleep, values submerged in the astral light attract and repel one another according to the laws of universal magnetism. Returning to the waking state involves, by its very nature, the reintegration of values into the physical body. One of the most extraordinary things is that people believe they are only in contact with the external world. Gnosis teaches us that we are in relation to an invisible inner world, imperceptible to ordinary physical senses but visible to clairvoyance. This inner invisible world is much more extensive and contains many more interesting things than the external world constantly observed through our five sensory windows. Many dreams refer to the place where we are in the inner invisible world, from which various life circumstances arise. The language of dreams is exactly comparable to the language of parables. Those who interpret everything literally think that the sower of the Christic gospel went out to sow and that the seeds fell on stony ground, etc. However, they do not understand the meaning of such a parable because it belongs to the symbolic language of the emotional superior center. It is worth noting that every dream, no matter how absurd or incoherent, has some meaning. It not only indicates the psychic center it is associated with but also the psychological state of that center. Many penitents who boasted of their chastity failed in the sexual center when subjected to tests in the inner worlds, leading to nocturnal pollutions. In the perfect adept, the five psychic centers, intellectual, emotional, motor, instinctive, and sexual, function in full harmony with the infinite. What are the mental processes during dreams? What emotions stir and move us? What are our activities outside the physical body? What predominant instinctual sensations exist? We have taken note of sexual states during dreams. We must be sincere with ourselves, for as Plato rightly said, man knows himself by his dreams. The issue of the malfunctioning of the centers is a topic that requires a lifelong study through self-observation and rigorous examination of dreams. Understanding the centers and their correct or incorrect functioning is not something that can be achieved instantly, it requires infinite patience. Our entire life unfolds based on the functioning of the centers, which control our thoughts, feelings, ideas, hopes, fears, loves, hates, actions, sensations, pleasures, satisfactions, frustrations, and more. These aspects are all found within the centers. Discovering any inhuman element in any of the centers must serve as ample reason for esoteric work. Every psychological defect must be comprehended through the technique of meditation before proceeding to its elimination. Eradicating any undesirable element is only possible by invoking the assistance of Tanansen, the Divine Mother Kundalini, a variant of our own being. The fault specific to each one of us is how we experience death from moment to moment, only with death comes the new in the scale of beings and things. Undoubtedly, various influences reach us. If we have understood the ray of creation, we also know that different influences are constantly reaching us, and these influences vary in quality. It is essential to always remember that there are superior influences acting upon us, and these are recorded by our psychic apparatus. However, if we are attached to our senses and do not pay full attention to our inner life, we will fail to perceive these influences. Chapter 2, Discipline of the Yoga of Sleep those aspirants who genuinely desire direct mystical experience must undoubtedly begin with the discipline of the yoga of sleep. It is evident that Gnostics must be demanding with themselves and learn to create favorable conditions for remembering, especially given the weariness of daily life. It is essential to pay close attention to our state of being. Devotees leading a sedentary life can benefit from short brisk walks in the fresh air before going to bed, which helps relax the muscles. However, it is important to clarify that physical exercises should never be overdone. We need to live harmoniously. The dinner, snack or final meal of the day should be light, free from heavy or stimulating delicacies, carefully avoiding ingesting elements that could keep us awake or rob us of sleep. The highest form of thinking is not thinking, when the mind is still and silent, free from the concerns of the day and worldly anxieties it is then in a 100% favorable state for the practice of sleep yoga. When the emotional center truly works, it concludes, even if only for a brief time, 
the process of thinking. It is evident that the mentioned center becomes active with Dionysian ecstasy, such rapture becomes possible when listening with infinite devotion to the delightful symphonies of a Wagner or a Mozart, or a Chopin, etc. Beethoven's music, especially, is extraordinary for intensely vibrating the higher emotional center. In it, the sincere Gnostic finds an immense field of mystical exploration because it is not music of forms but of ineffable archetypal ideas. Each note has its meaning, each silence an elevated emotion. Beethoven, when feeling so cruelly the rigors and tests of the spiritual night, instead of failing like many aspirants, opened the eyes of his intuition to mysterious supernaturalism, to the spiritual part of nature, to that region where the angelic kings of this great universal creation dwell, Thwalak, Ejikatl, Hwaitatl, etc., etc., etc. The musician philosopher emphasized throughout his exemplary life. On his work table, he constantly has before him his divine mother, Kundalini, the ineffable Neat, the Tenantsin of Anahuac, the supreme Egyptian Isis. It has been said that the great master had placed at the foot of that adorable figure an inscription in his own handwriting that mysteriously reads, I am the one who has been, is, and will be, and no mortal has lifted my veil. Inner revolutionary progress is impossible without the immediate assistance of our Divine Mother, Tenantsin. Every grateful child must love their mother, Beethoven loved his dearly. Outside the physical body, during the hours of sleep, the soul can converse with its Divine Mother. However, it is clear that we must begin with the discipline of sleep yoga. We need to pay attention to the bedroom where we will sleep. The decoration should be pleasant, the most desirable colors for the purposes pursued, despite what other authors advise, are precisely the three primary tones, blue, yellow, red. Undoubtedly, the three basic colors always correspond to the three primary forces of nature, the holy triad, maxi cam no holy affirm, holy deny, holy reconcile. It is worth noting that the three original forces of this great creation always crystallize in a positive, negative, and neutral form. The cause cause orum of the holy triamatsi kamno is hidden in the active element, okadanak, this last element, in itself, is merely the emancipation of the sacred solar absolute. Obviously, rejecting the three fundamental colors, after all these reasons mentioned, is equivalent to a logical deduction, to fall into absurdity into folly. Sleep yoga is extraordinary, marvelous, formidable, but it tends to be very demanding. The bedroom must always be well perfumed and ventilated, but not flooded with the cold night air. After a thorough self-examination and that of the bedroom where we will sleep, the Gnostic must examine the bed. If we observe any compass, we can verify for ourselves that the needle always points north. Undoubtedly, it is possible to consciously harness the magnetic current of the world that always flows from south to north. We should orient the bed in such a way that the head is always towards the north, this allows us to intelligently use the magnetic current indicated by the needle. The mattress should not be excessively hard or too soft, it must have an elasticity that does not affect the psychic processes of the sleeper in any way. Squeaky springs or a creaking headboard at the slightest body movement are serious obstacles to these practices. Under the pillow, a notebook, notepad, and a pencil are placed in such a way that they can be easily found in the dark. The bed linens should be fresh and very clean. The pillowcase should be scented with our preferred fragrance. After fulfilling all these requirements, the Gnostic will proceed to take the second step of this esoteric discipline. They will lie down in their bed and, having turned off the lights, will lie on their back with their eyes closed and their hands on the solar plexus. They will remain completely still for a few moments, after fully relaxing physically and mentally, they will concentrate on Morpheus, the god of sleep. Undoubtedly, each isolated part of our true being has specific functions, and it is Morpheus who, not to be confused with Orpheus, is in charge of instructing us in the mysteries of sleep. It would be more than impossible to outline a diagram of the being, but all spiritualized parts isolated from our common presence seek the absolute perfection of their functions. When we concentrate with Morpheus, he rejoices at the brilliant opportunity we offer him. It is urgent to have faith and to know how to beseech. 
we must ask Morpheus to enlighten us and awaken us in the supersensible worlds. At this point, a very special drowsiness begins to take hold of the esoteric Gnostic, and they then adopt the position of a lion, lying on their right side, with their head pointing north. They raise their legs slowly until their knees are bent, and in this position, the left leg is supported on the right. Then they place their right cheek on their right palm and let the left arm rest on the leg on the same side. Upon waking from normal sleep, we should not move, as it is clear that such movement disturbs our memories. Undoubtedly, retrospective exercise is necessary in such moments when we wish to remember our dreams with complete precision. The Gnostic should carefully record the details of the dream or dreams in the notebook or notepad placed under the pillow for this purpose. This allows them to keep a meticulous record of their inner progress in sleep yoga. Even if only vague fragments of the dream or dreams remain in memory, these should be carefully recorded. When nothing is left in memory, the retrospective exercise should be initiated based on the first thought we had at the exact moment of waking. Obviously, this thought is intimately associated with the last dream. We solemnly clarify that the retrospective exercise begins before returning completely to the state of wakefulness, while still in a drowsy state, trying to consciously follow the dream sequence. The practice of this exercise always begins with the last image we had just before returning to the state of wakefulness. We will conclude this chapter by solemnly affirming that it is not possible to move beyond this part related to the discipline of sleep yoga unless we have achieved perfect memory of our dream experiences. Cultural Institute, Chapter 3, The Tantric Dream Undoubtedly, it is essential to review our notebook or notepad monthly to verify for ourselves the progressive development of dream memory. Any possibility of forgetting must be eliminated. We should not continue with the subsequent practices until we have achieved perfect memory. Particularly interesting are the dreams that seem to come from other centuries or develop in settings or environments unrelated to the waking existence of the dreamer. We must remain in a state of alertness, alert perception, novelty, and pay special attention to the study of details, including specific issues, conversations, meetings, temples, unusual activities related to other people, and so on. Once the full development of dream memory has been achieved and any possibility of forgetting has been eliminated, the process of symbolization will open the path to revelation. The fundamental science of dream interpretation must be sought in the law of philosophical analogies, the law of analogies of opposites, the law of correspondences, and numerology. Astral images reflected in the magical mirror of the imagination should never be interpreted literally, as they are merely symbolic representations of archetypal ideas and should be used in the same way a mathematician uses algebraic symbols. It is worth noting that such ideas descend from the world of pure spirit. Title 4, Practice of the Return When the aspirant has successfully completed all Gnostic exercises related to the esotericism of dreams, it is evident that they are now well prepared for the practice of the return. In the previous chapter, we mentioned the initiator element that emerges as if by enchantment from the changing and amorphous expressions of their dreams. Certain very psychic, refined, and impressionable individuals have always possessed the initiator element within themselves. These people are characterized by the continuous repetition of the same dream. These psychics periodically relieve a particular scene or constantly experience a specific creature or symbol in their dream experiences. Each time the initiator element, whether it's a symbol, sound, color, or person, etc., is remembered upon waking from normal sleep, the aspirant, with their eyes still closed, continues visualizing the familiar key image and then intentionally attempts to fall asleep again, continuing the same dream. In other words, the aspirant tries to become consciously aware of their own dream and intentionally continues it in a state of wakefulness with full lucidity and self-control. They become both the spectator and the actor of a dream, with the not insignificant advantage of being able to leave the scene at will to move freely in the astral world. Then the aspirant, free from all the constraints of the flesh, outside of their physical body, will have detached themselves from their old and familiar environment, entering a universe governed by different laws. The discipline of the state of dreaming, of the Buddhist tantrists, leads didactically to the awakening of consciousness. 
the Gnostic can only awaken to the true state of enlightenment by understanding and disintegrating dreams. The sacred scriptures of Lindostan solemnly affirm that the whole world is the dream of Brahma. Starting from this Hindu postulate, we will emphatically state the following, when Brahma awakens, the dream concludes. As long as the aspirant has not yet achieved the radical dissolution, not only of the dreams themselves but also of the psychological mechanisms that originate them, absolute awakening will be more than impossible. The definitive awakening of consciousness is only possible through a radical transformation. The four Christic Gospels insist on the need to awaken. Unfortunately, people continue to sleep. Quetzalcoatl, the Mexican Christ, was certainly a fully awakened man. The multiplicity of his functions also indicates with great precision the great antiquity of his cult and the deep reverence with which he was viewed throughout Central America. The holy gods of Anahuac are perfect men in the most complete sense of the word beings completely awake, individuals who eradicated all possibility of dreaming. Tlaloc, the one who makes God spring from the rains and lightning, being a god, is also an awakened man, someone who had to eliminate not only his dreams but also all possibility of dreaming. He is the main sacred individual of the ancient Almec culture and always appears with the mask of the tiger serpent on colossal axes and various jade figures. Texcatlipaca and Hutzilipochtli, creatures of fire, living representations of night and day, are also awakened men, beings who managed to go beyond dreams, outside the physical body. The awakened man can invoke the holy gods of Aztecs, Mayans, Zapotecs, Toltecs, etc., with the help of the holy gods. With their assistance, the awakened man can study the secret doctrine of Anahuac in the astral light. Obviously, the archetypal ideas that descend from the being are marvelous, informing us about the psychological state of a particular center of the machine, as well as intimate esoteric matters, possible successes, or dangers etc. Always wrapped in the garment of symbolism, unlocking a particular astral symbol, scene, or figure with the purpose of extracting the essential idea is only possible through the meditation of the being, logical and confrontational. When reaching this stage of the discipline of dream yoga, it becomes essential to enter the tantric aspect of the matter. Ancient wisdom teaches us that Tanantsinda Vikundalini, our particular cosmic divine mother, as each person has their own, can take any form since she is the origin of all forms. Therefore, it is advisable for the Gnostic to meditate upon her before falling asleep. The aspirant should enter the process of dreaming daily, repeating the following prayer with great faith, Tanansan Tedioinan, My mother, come to me, come to me according to tantric science. If the Gnostic persists in this practice, sooner or later, as if by magic, an initiating element will emerge from the changing and amorphous expressions of their dreams. Until this initiator is fully identified, it is essential to continue recording their dreams in the notebook. The study and deep analysis of each recorded dream are urgent in the esoteric discipline of tantric dreaming. Undoubtedly, didactic progress will lead us to the discovery of the initiator or unifying element of the dream. Without a doubt, the sincere Gnostic who reaches this state of tantric discipline is ready to take the next step, which will be the subject of our next chapter. Chapter 5, Dreams in General A dog attacking, an attack from a friend. A dog biting, harm caused. A docile dog, sincere friendship. A lion attacking, karma to be paid. A tame lion, divine law in favor. A wolf dog attacking, karma to be paid. A tree split in two, someone will fall but will be able to rise. A tree uprooted, someone will fall and won't be able to rise. A marriage, achievements of the being. Seeing oneself dead, favorable change, death of an ego. A snake attacking a woman, poor work in sexual transmutation. A tame snake, good work in sexual transmutation. A cat attacking, betrayal by a spouse or close people. Taking a bath in pure water, health. Catching live fish, physical vitality, apostleship. Bathing in a pure water pool, sexual transmutation. An airplane, spiritual advancement. Stars, divine intelligences. 
Being busy at work, elimination of egos and defects. Seeing oneself dressed in rags, spiritual trouble. Being naked with undergarments, bitterness, tragedy. Rain, tears, clouds, a cloudy mind. A scorpion attacking, astral larvae in action. Flowers, virtues of the soul. Sowing flowers, conquest of virtues. Sowing seeds, sexual transmutation. Harvesting, achievements through other people. Inner sun and moon with extreme cold or heat, desperation, sexual downfall. Swimming against the current, struggle against passion. Flying, achievements of the being. Balancing, it depends on how it is seen. Rainbow, alliance. Excrement, financial help. Swallows, help on the initiatic path in the desert. Losses and dreams, an elephant represents the consciousness to awaken. A stork, internal birth. Do, spiritual peace. Colors. Yellow, work with Christ. Green, hope. White, purity. Black, mediocre state. Purple, high spirituality. Blue, love. Studying the Bible, being in a bad state. A book given by masters, future teachings to receive. Silence of a master, stupid question. A staircase, the initiatic path. A turbulent sea, no mastery over passion. A calm sea, mastery over passion. A broom, internal cleansing. A new broom, elimination of egos and defects. An old broom, egos to be eradicated. Steep mountains, climbing towards the goal. Mountains in general, fertile work. A white bull, venerable master. A black bull, black magician. An army against, karma to be paid. An army in favor, divine law in favor. Chapter 6, What Numbers Represent When you dream of any number, you are being informed esoterically about various aspects of your personal life. In the Kabbalah, the science of numbers, there are the numbers called major arcanas, ranging from 1 to 22. Each of them has its meaning, depending on the number. To understand what is indicated when dreaming of a number greater than 22, you should sum its digits. For example, if you dream of 23, by adding its digits, 2 plus 3, you get 5, so 5 is the number. If you dream of 59, adding 5 plus 9 gives 14, so 14 is the number. If it's 656, adding 6 plus 5 plus 6 gives 17, and since this number exceeds 22, you sum its digits again, 1 plus 7, resulting in 8, and so on. We provide below the meaning of each of the numbers from 1 to 22. Abbreviations used AA, Astrological Association E.g., in general AM, Shaping Attribute P, Spiritual Plane at, Transcendent Axiom PF, Physical Plane AV, Various Associations PM, Mental Plane D, Right R, Reverse Number 1 P, Initiation into the Mysteries PM, Volitional Power. PF, Mastery of Forces in Motion. Et, Be in your works as you are in your thoughts. AA, Mercury. E.g., Overcoming Obstacles, Positive Initiatives, Variable Influences. D, Will, Virtue, Perseverance, Triumph over Adversity, Healthy Ideals Prevail. R, Wisdom, Talent, Genius. Doubts and delays. Number 2. P. Source of life. PM. Play of opposites. PF. Exchange, duplicity. At. The wind and the waves are always in favor of those who know how to sail. AA. Virgo. E.g., truth prevails, intuition does not deceive, prudence and indiscriminate generosity. D. Conceptual clarity, lucidity. Analytical judgment, observational capacity. Ingenuity in arranging complicated business deals. R. 
overwhelming passion, spiritual exaltation, conflicts, anger, bitterness, dissensions. Number 3. P. Knowledge of the Hidden. PM. Ideation. PF. Expansion of Ideas and Desires. Et. Your loom is weaving, fabrics for your use and fabrics you will not use. AA. Libra. E.g., possible marriage, doubt corrodes the soul, seize the opportunity. D. Certain union, lasting emotional connection, mutual attraction, chaste kisses. Number 4. P. Manifestation of divine virtue. P.M. Final solution. P.F. Materialization of things. Et. Give a blessing to the work of your hands and put reason into the work of your mind. A.A., Scorpio. E.g., intense emotional connections, control over the material, self-mastery. D. Eroticism, children, spiritual elevation, God. R. Distances, emotional coldness, confusion, farewell letter. Number 5. P. Manifestations of the Creator. P.M., Mastery of Passions. P.F. Control of natural forces. At, I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see you, and my heart feels you. AA, Jupiter. E.g., unexpected cooperation, help from equals or superiors, soundly guided judgment. D, a helping hand, excellent entertainment, satisfying exchange, excitement at an encounter. R, retraction, delay. Persistent Nostalgia, Isolation Number 6 P. Instinctive Knowledge P.M. Abstinence and Gluttony, Freedom and Necessity, Duty and Right F.F. Determination of State Et. You give me work, Lord, but with it, Strength A.A. Venus E.G. Do not be tempted, clarify your positions, be guided by the spiritual D. Constant caviling, dead end, dejection, anxieties. R. Envious threats, untimely traps, treacherous trust, deceitful friends, schemers. Number 7. P. Spirit governs matter. P.M. Elimination of doubts and errors. P.F. Impulses and desires for improvement. At. When knowledge enters your heart and wisdom is sweet to your soul. Ask and it will be given to you. A.A., Sagittarius. E.g., triumph in what you set out to do, your efforts will be rewarded, pleasant vacations. D., advantageous operation, secure contract, accepted writings, concrete project. R., loss of a valuable object, useless lamentations, words of comfort from strangers, a trap in chance. Number 8. P the Absolute. P.M., The Power of Right. P.F., Evolution and Involution, Attraction and Rejection. Et, Build an altar in your heart, but do not make your heart an altar. A.A., Capricorn. E.G., Moderation of your impulses and desires, do not make decisions today, relax. D., A Productive Find, Your Number, 6, Save Yourself from Asking Questions. Stubbornness overcome in your favor. R. Rash decision, tomorrow is too late, do not digress, memories exhumed that torment. R. Break up, dissensions, altercations, separation. Number 9. P. Divine light and human works PM, discretion, charity and knowledge. P.F. Realization, culmination and elevation of desires. At. Go up the mountain and see the promised land, but I do not tell you that you will enter it. A.A., Aquarius. E.g., assert your discretion, do not share your purchase plans, reflect on the opportunity of your desire. D. A word too many that tarnishes your reputation, conflicting versions, lack of inner balance, murmurs. R. Priest, Pastor, Rabbi. Confidence in an undisclosed secret. Beneficial Silence Number 10 P. 
time and circumstances as architects of perfection. PM, the various processes of thought. PF, action and reaction. At, knowledge acquired through experience is costly, but more costly is the one you fail to acquire. AA, Uranus. E.g., the unusual confronts fortune, farewell to an old friendship, bad mood and affliction. Do not despair. D. A close friend drifts away, old comrades knock on the door, a letter announcing a gift, knowledge of a long-awaited secret. R. You missed the opportunity for now, do not attend that appointment, acknowledge the truth even if it hurts, anxieties. Number 11. P. The spiritual is the precursor principle. P.M. Domination through intellect. P.F. Control of base passions. Et, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. A.A., Neptune. E.g., your intuition does not fail, magnify your faith, the period of confusion will be short, there is a waiting period. D. Expedite the process, confirm your suspicions, do not indulge in whimsical illusions. R. Disillusionment due to forgetfulness, very ambition, your ambiguities do not benefit you. Number 12. P. Pleasure in a job well done. P.M. Circumspection in painful decisions. P.F. Abnegation as an expansive force. At. Even though the sun wearies you during the day and the moon saddens you at night, do not slip your foot on the slippery path or sleep when you stand guard. A.A. Pisces. E.g., old bitterness dissipates, evasions do not align when the heart should speak, delight in the beautiful, and you will perfect your soul. D. Foster friendship and collect smiles, do not feign escapes, face the facts, kindness should be part of your own contentment. R. Mitigate your irritation, forthcoming admonition, a disturbing friend disrupts the evening. Number 13. P. Renewal of life. P.M. Inertia as a function of movement. P.F. Lethargy, drowsiness, sleepwalking. Et. The night has passed, and the new day has arrived. Put on the armor of light. A.A. Aries. E.G. Longing favored by distance, do not surrender to abandonment, maintain your presence, renew your perspectives and rejuvenate. D. Pomposity does not suit you, do not judge by analogy, love is not about grandiose phrases but simple devotion. R. Brawl over matters of interest, clash, extreme laziness that complicates everything. Number 14. P. Unity of the inner and outer. P.M. Mutual affections, association of ideas. P.F. Regulation of gender relations, balance of vital force. At, do not be like straw in the wind or the wind in front of straw. A.A., Taurus. E.g., it is advisable to give things their proper proportion, exaggeration destroys virtue, balance is the foundation of spiritual peace. D. Assist in smoothing out misunderstandings, pursue your desire decisively but without harming others, hostility will yield. R. Excesses in food and drink, the doctor calls. Do not live to extremes, extract the truth from what seems incoherent. Number 15. P. Manifestation of individual will. P.M. The power of desire, the impulse toward the opposite. P.F. Generative processes, intense desires. At. They made me a keeper of the vineyards, but my own vineyard I did not keep. A.A. Saturn. E.G. Individual will is a determining factor, the allure of mystery seduces but destroys without guidance, creation is a burning fire that should not be extinguished. D. Prosperity through legal means and fate, intense desires, violent passions. R. Harmful affections, situations of violence, discord, malice. Number 17. P. Selflessness as a source of life. P.M. Experience is light. P.F. Optimism, expectations, and charity. At. Some men seek signs to believe, and others seek wisdom to act, 
but a hopeful heart has everything in its hope. AA, Gemini. E.g., waiting for the future confidently is a foretaste of the immortality of existence. The magic of faith creates everything. D. Intuition, enlightenment, new beginnings, gains. R. Brief afflictions and brief satisfactions, annoyances and reconciliations, deprivations, abandonments. Number 18. P. The mystery of life. P.M. The negative is an exponent of the positive. P.F. Manifestation of hidden powers. At. Let your charity be an inexhaustible granary and your charity. A.A. Cancer. E.g., contrariety and deceit lurk, your gruffness fosters enmities, beware of treacherous flattery. D. Apparent triumphs and failures. R. Inconstancy, traps, confusion, changes, long deliberations, unexpected hindrances, delayed results. Number 19. P. The divine light is the principle of knowledge. P.M. Motor intelligence. P.F. Materialization of ideas into actions. At. Take the shield of your faith and advance with a determined step, whether in favor of the wind or against all winds. A.A. Leo. E.g., joy resides in your temperance, dedicate yourself to your loved ones, and it will not weigh on you, pure love is your armor. D. Increased power, benefits from your efforts, inheritances, clarity in your desires. R. Danger in employment, disputes over writings, misunderstandings about results. Number 20. P. Inner illumination. P.M. Revelation of genius. P.F. Harmonious correspondence between the moral and the material. At. Flower in the apple tree, fruit in the vine. Sowing in maturity. AA, Moon. E.g., long postponed aspirations materialize, awaken to reality, laziness does not help you rise. D, Harmonious choices, fortunate initiatives, compensations, loyal friends. R, Delayed gains, treacherous friends undermine success. Number 21. P, The power to manifest life in infinite forms. P.M., Supreme Knowledge is Bliss. P.F., Inspiration, Work, Appropriate Reward. At, the sun rises and the sun sets, and then hurries back to where it rises. A.A., Sunday. E.G., success is within your reach, in friendship lies your greatest support, use your imagination, do not submit to it. D., Long Life, Inheritance, Victories. Aptitude for overcoming obstacles. R. Rivals vying for affections, uncertain situation. Despot, tyrant, dominant family member. Number 22. P. The inscrutability of divine laws. P.M. Credulity, audacity, and recklessness are causes of ignorance, error, and danger. P.F. Imprudence, extravagance, delirium, vanity. At, my soul does not enter their secret, nor does my ship enter their port. A.A., Pluto. E.g., do not take missteps due to indiscretion, do not hesitate too much, you will self-limit, help others. D. Farmer, the end of some things and the beginning of others. R. Danger of isolation, confusion, treacherous gift, deceptive promise, disillusion. The International Gnostic Movement. This is an organization that represents the synthesis of all sciences, arts, philosophies, esoteric teachings, and religions. Through Gnostic teaching, one can achieve spiritual perfection by encompassing all the knowledge of ancient, contemporary, and future humanity, taking the tree of practical and verifiable wisdom to its root. In every human being, in the deepest part of their being, lies the truth spoken of by philosophers, esotericists, and religious figures. The truth is within oneself, there is no need to seek it outside. Through the guidance provided by the international Gnostic movement, each person can come to know themselves and then understand the universe and beyond. Gnostic teaching is the same as what Jesus Christ shared with his disciples and is also found in the Bible and parables. 
it is essential to interpret the Bible correctly to practice the path of truth that Christ instructs us to follow for spiritual perfection. Anyone who firmly and decisively takes this path can become worthy of guidance from the Master Jesus himself.